Hi everyone, I'm Gio. A few weeks ago I created a video on how to install firmware on an Avaya Media Gateway. As I was getting ready to upgrade my G430, I realized that there are some minor differences that you have to look out for when you go from a CM6 firmware to a 7.13 firmware. And today I'm going to show you what that process is. When you upgrade your Media Gateway to a newer firmware, always make sure to read the README file that Avaya issues with every release. To install firmware 39.28, the README file specifies that first, we must install firmware 38.21.2. Second, we must disable or enable the logins before downloading the firmware. If we look at the README file for firmware 38.21.2, you'll see that we must run the command busy out board before downloading the software and release board after downloading the software. To be honest, I've never had to busy out the gateway board to download the software. In our example, we'll skip this part and see if we encounter any issues. I have logged on to my media gateway and I'm going to run show image version. This has displayed our boot bank and boot bank B is running the current firmware version. We are going to upload our new firmware version to boot bank A. I have my USB stick connected to port USB 1 on the G430 and the command we're going to use to upload our new firmware is copy space USB space capital SW underscore image capital A for our boot bank A space USB device 0 for USB 1 and the file name of our firmware. Then I'm going to press enter. Under confirmation, I'm going to type Y for yes. This has started the download and to check the process, I'm going to run the show download software status 10 command. The current status of the gateway is writing and this means that the gateway is downloading the software and writing it to boot bank A. I ran the show download software status 10 command again and the running state is idle. This means the gateway has finished downloading the firmware to boot back A. Next, I'm going to type show image version to verify my new firmware image. Boot bank A is showing the new firmware image we just downloaded. Next, I'm going to make boot bank B the active boot bank by typing set boot bank bank dash capital A. Then I'm going to press enter. Boot bank is set to boot bank A now. Then I'm going to type show image version. As you can see, boot bank B is still the active boot bank because we have to reboot the gateway before our changes take effect. But before we reboot, we are going to write our changes to memory or else boot bank A won't become the active boot bank. To save our changes, type copy, run, start, then press enter. Our changes have been saved and now we can reboot our gateway by typing reset. Do you want to continue? I'm going to type Y for yes. Our gateway is now rebooting. The gateway has finished rebooting and it took about 6 minutes to come up. I have ran the show image version command and as you can see we are now running on the new firmware version. At the beginning of the video I told you that I was going to install two firmware versions 38.21.2 and 39.28. However, while I was offline I noticed that my gateway was not connecting to my communication manager or utility server. I installed firmware 39.16 via the USB drive. After the installation of the 39.16 firmware, I still had issues so I ran the nvram initialize command to reset the gateway back to factory default. This deletes the software configuration only and leaves the installed firmware. Then I connected to the gateway via the services port and reconfigured the G430 and it is now connected to my communication manager. Under the call controller status, it shows that I'm registered, it shows the IP address of my CM and the link status is up which is something that I was not seeing previously. Next, we're going to install the 39.2a firmware via the utility server. I'm going to download the firmware to boot bank A and the command we're going to use is copy space tftp space capital SW underscore image capital A for our boot bank A, the file name of our firmware and the IP address of our utility server. Then I'm going to press enter. I'm going to type yes to confirm. This has started the download. I'm going to run the show download software status 10 command. Under running state it says writing. Previously I was not getting that message. I was getting the preparing for download message and then it would fail. But now this looks good. It looks like we are connected to our utility server and everything is working as it should. The USB message you're seeing there is because I disconnected my USB drive. The gateway is still downloading the firmware. Our firmware has finished downloading so now I'm going to run the show image version command. We can verify that our new firmware is in boot bank A. So now we're going to set boot bank A as the active boot bank. Boot bank A has been set. Now I'm going to save my configuration by typing copy run config. Run command is copy run start. 
Our configuration has been saved, so now I'm going to reset the gateway. The gateway has finished rebooting. We are now running on firmware 39.28. One thing to point out is when I upgraded the gateways in my production environment, it took about 10 minutes for the gateways to come up. Today, it did not take that long, but keep note of it in case your gateways take a long time to come up after the reboot. This completes our tutorial. Today we upgraded a G430 gateway from firmware 31.22 via a USB drive and a utility server. Along the way, I informed you of some troubleshooting I had to do to get the gateways communicated with CM and the utility server. If you want to see how to perform an NVRAM initialize, check out my video resetting a via media gateway to factory default and changing the IP address of a media gateway. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave a comment below and thank you for watching Geos via How To and stay tuned for new videos.